And and now on stage we will have uh, Claire Barrett. Uh, Claire Barrett. Um, so she's the strategy translator at EPIs First and uh, the woman in EPIs lead from the EPIs community. So hello, Claire. How are you? Hi, Mehdi. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you very much for being here with us. And I invite you to share your slides so you can actually uh, tell your story and uh, and so we can have a good discussion about aligning teams and strategy behind EPI investment. Thank you, Mehdi. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, um, joining and participating in this uh, fantastic conference. Um, quickly introducing myself, I'm Claire Barrett. I uh, have spent uh, more than probably 25 years uh, uh, helping uh, large, usually large, mature organizations uh, navigate the complexity of um, uh, delivering IT-enabled change uh, that sticks over time. Uh, uh, I now focus in on uh, helping those organizations realize their transformation uh, with bringing API strategies to life. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, from uh, inside some of those large organizations, uh, some of the challenges that we're seeing and some of the ways that people can get over challenges with in making the right uh, API-enabled investment decisions. By way of a bit of context, um, the uh, McKinsey produced a report earlier this year uh, about um, exploring the progress that people were making with what they call industry 4.0 um, plans, but effectively um, I'm translating that as digital transformation agendas which um, you know, most large organizations around the world are choosing to do in one form or another, uh, and medium sized organizations for that matter. And one of the questions that they put to those organizations uh, uh, since the start of COVID was, um, uh, where were they looking to um, uh, progress for the next six months in uh, their transformation agenda? And uh, they, um, uh, found that about a fifth of the organizations they spoke to were planning to accelerate what they'd already um, started in uh, transformation. And uh, another fifth um, had actually chosen to kind of choosing to put a pause button on. But the majority, 60% of them, were continuing to want to invest, but they were needing to get a lot more focused and selective about uh, what types of transformation programs and projects they invested in. Now, this is broader than APIs. Um, this can also be around uh, technology-enabled change for uh, you know, collaborating, um, uh, employee collaboration, or um, uh, accelerating a cloud agenda, or cybersecurity, um, AI, et cetera. But APIs are very much part of realizing uh, most organizations' you know, digitization and transformation agenda. So, from an API perspective, what we're hearing from many of the um, uh, clients and companies that we speak to is that they are in this problem that the space of this 60% where they're um, kind of having to spend a lot of time and energy with uh, um, articulating what API strategy invest, uh, um, strategy can mean, what investment they'll get, and what benefits that will, will attribute. So I'm going to talk about why that's so hard and focus in on three things that actually help answering that, that situation. And the first is knowing um, and understanding who your stakeholders are internally. Um, secondly, uh, um, uh, focusing on, on understanding what the direct benefits are that an API strategy can make a difference with, um, and that executing that strategy focuses on measuring the right things um, uh, at the right point in time. So. I think a lot of people would like to um, be in an environment where everybody, if you're like in their organization, is singing from the same song sheet uh, with what APIs can, can mean for them for the organization. Um, so Alan was talking just now about um, API products. If everybody's got a view about how that might be part of the strategy for the organization, that's great. But in reality, uh, we experience people feeling more like they're at a, um, their stakeholders are at kind of like a silent disco. Um, they're each dancing to maybe a, a different tune about APIs as core for architecture, another group talking about APIs from a cultural behavioral um, change perspective, an API first mindset perhaps, um, others about the technology simplification or products um, and monetization. So 
what we do is um, uh, help people think about how to separate out those different types of stakeholders and um, concentrate on who benefits. Uh, uh, instead of um, giving you a case study of a specific example, I've, I've, um, I'm introducing you to a, a fictional um, mature organisation, a global player, um, that uh, can bring to life some of the ch challenges that uh, people are having by looking at the, the personas, the people within that organisation who need to be on board and, and make decisions. Um, this could be any industry, and, and another point the McKinsey report made actually was um, that uh, people's digitaz digital transformation agendas are becoming more consistent regardless of sector. So people are actually looking to um, make the same types of choices and decisions about where they invest and what sorts of technologies they um, priorities they go after. So um, let's imagine this is, for example, sake of argument, a pharmaceutical business. And first introducing Carl, who's uh, um, been in the organization 20 years. He's uh, um, uh, well respected as a, a deep subject matter expert um, in the business problems applied to today's systems and technology. And Carl has been championing APIs in the organization to date, um, although feeling um, that uh, uh, in such, to some expect, extent, um, his team and colleagues haven't been able to necessarily keep up to, up to pace. Um, there's been a number of API management solutions on the go to being consolidated, and uh, uh, um, the, but there's a lot of proliferation happening, um, uh, which isn't necessarily got, got ready to be able to support. Um, Sanjay is our second um, persona in this organization. He's, uh, um, he's the big delivery person, um, the, the go-to safe pair of hands for uh, delivering complex change. Uh, he's an external contractor in the to the organization, been there a couple of years, uh, understands that APIs are going to really help speeding up um, change in the future, but there's not enough available um, ready for his teams to be able to use yet. Um, and he sees that investment in other things like um, cloud enablement, cyber and AI are more important today. So that it takes me on to the third uh, person in this fictional company. Jennifer's our um, uh, uh, commercial, pragmatic, um, uh, high flyer in the in the business side of this organization, who uh, looks after a number of customer accounts. Um, this is a kind of business to business um, uh, part of the, the organization. And she's hearing quite a number of her customers looking to do more business via APIs um, with her and um, her teams, but she, um, is happy to, to leave her uh, digital and IT colleagues um, to look after that and make them happy, but um, make it happen. Um, she is, however, quite interested in what other people um, and companies are doing, uh, both in and around her industry in particular. So um, we um, find for organizations looking at API stakeholders that if they map them to these three groups, they can get a sense of understanding where they will be able to um, uh, justify and explain their API strategy more clearly. Um, so our sponsors represent the elders of the community. Um, they've got the, 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 the um, culture of the company, the history. Um, they know the bigger picture strategy of where the organization's going. Um, their technology partners um, provide the roadmaps and the navigators, if you like, to, to help them get there. Um, and there's a group of transformers who are um, innovating and exploring and, and reimagining ways of doing business uh, that will help get them there. Uh, and you could probably work out for yourselves that um, our stakeholders of, of Jennifer as a sponsor and Sanjay uh, as a transformer and Carl in our technology um, uh, space uh, are representatives of those three um, types of people. And an API um, strategy can be led we find from, from any one of those three, um, but is usually moving towards the middle. Um, so, so we would ask where is the API center of gravity for an organization? Um, which of those three is it coming from? Um, or is it actually um, ideally perhaps um, uh, in the middle or maybe most likely, um, depending you know, if it's a mature organization undergoing change, it may well be on one of the intersections between these two. So 
what that means is um, it kind of explains why some of the challenges with all of the um, potential opportunities, all of this, uh, these different ways in which APIs realize things for different people mean that it can be hard to get a benefits case um, clear and, uh, and articulated. So we um, uh, recommend that uh, um, organizations avoid um, falling for what I would call the indirect benefits trap. Um, and this is perhaps trying to um, uh, uh, lean into the things that are important to the different stakeholder groups. And I've got a couple of examples for you here for things that are important to Jennifer and her team around um, uh, realizing uh, new business models potentially or um, unlocking new ways of um, getting value into the organization. Sanjay and uh, the, the groups that he's working with are all about acceleration, making things easier to change, getting delivery happening, um, maybe scaling uh, more agile practices across the organization, while Carl is focused on, um, uh, with his peer groups, it's focused on simplifying the agenda, perhaps reducing um, the IT risk. So if, if these were examples of uh, things which, as a, an API expert, we would know um, APIs could help with, the challenge is they can also be contributed to by a whole lot of other types of strategies and investments for the organization. So we invite people to dance what I call the benefits two-step and drill below the um, things that are uh, important to different stakeholders and look at places that have got commonality on the intersections between these stakeholder groups and that are measurable from investment in APIs. So, and that are much more tangible. So for example, um, increasing the ability with which the current API portfolio can be discovered and seen and understood, um, focusing in on all the processes and automation that could uh, make um, API onboarding access um, faster will definitely benefit in this fictional company, benefit the um, Sanjay and his team uh, in digitizing things faster. And um, Carl and the technology community will also get benefit from internal change. Um, if we looked at the intersection, um, step one uh, for um, uh, uh, direct benefits between um, our um, sponsor community and our technologists, um, could be about increasing the amount of API reuse, um, could be uh, building education and knowledge and know-how um, among uh, stakeholder groups in, for example, business and or collaborative business tech teams um, that will uh, look for API opportunities that weren't previously understood. Um, uh, and lastly, uh, there could be some direct benefits for um, uh, that are measurable and would want to be chased uh, in improving the um, customer's self-service um, for APIs or um, showing the time uh, that it takes um, you know, uh, to innovate, increasing the ability to do that faster. So these boxes become the direct um, benefits that uh, can be achieved and they inform the indirect benefits. And uh, uh, this we feel is something that's, that's very important um, and often uh, and can does need to often have quite a lot of time and attention put to it, um, particularly where there are uh, there's a lot of um, competition for investment in other uh, complementary activities. Um, uh, and as far as possible, if they can be working on this intersection um, and moving towards the centre together, uh, the clearer it'll be. Uh, the other point is that one may not be able to do all of these at the same time. Um, what you want to be able to do is work in one. Uh, one, one bubble, if you like, um, and uh, rather than try and solve um, all of the, uh, you know, convince and make his uh, impact everywhere from day one. Which goes on to how you hold people's attention through the, uh, the execution phase of um, the, the strategy, the plans, which themselves will continuously evolve. And this is a lot about choosing the right metrics for the right point in time. Um, uh, Alan actually talked about this um, earlier in terms of the sorts of measures that are appropriate for um, the right measurement system for supporting an, an API uh, product strategy um, and how, um, uh, uh, how over time your metrics will need to become more nuanced and more um, uh, specific um, as you uh, um, start taking on new, new ways of working 
Um, so for some organizations early in their journey, uh, the number of APIs may still be um, seen as, a, as a, an important and visible and easy to understand metric. But over time, um, that might actually be the wrong metric to be maybe even um, creating some um, unhelpful behaviors with the uh, um, as opposed and, and detract from encouraging reuse or encouraging um, uh, uh, people to get get more out of the existing um, API uh, portfolios and investment. And here are some examples of the types of measures um, that might evolve over time. The general theme being that through the execution of an API strategy, you're uh, continuously moving in the same direction, but might be taking some, some kind of small pivots and adjustments along the way. You're also, through these direct uh, benefits, contributing to larger indirect benefits. And these could be even beyond those ones that I talked through at the, uh, with the bubbles. These could be um, contributing to the, to the overall organizational major um, uh, key, um, key measures of, of uh, success. Um, these they may be sector specific, um, or they may be very um, generalized across um, the organization's measures. But these we would consider as the baseline metrics that don't change year on year and that typically are used to um, showcase the, the overall progress with the transformation agenda of which the API uh, strategy could be a part. Um, we would um, uh, uh, promote heavily that people spend focus both on setting the, the bar with these direct measures, but that they're also um, understanding and, and um, thinking about um, what the broader uh, raising of the bar for the organization as a whole is, is taking. And um, uh, when we've asked people about where they would put their effort, um, if they're looking at a, at a transformational level, uh, they would recommend spending and they find that the most successful change um, and transformation stickiness comes from more than half of their effort, about 60% for higher complexity organizations, 60% of their effort um, being spent on uh, tracking, measuring, and moving uh, uh, measures that will affect these direct benefits um, versus uh, a bit less of their effort, less than half, um, on, on monitoring and reporting on some of the bigger um, baseline metrics for the organization. Another critical piece for how, um, uh, how to get the uh, execution side um, to be uh, supported and continues to remain supported, and this is extremely um, relevant now in this in environment of um, these, uh, the COVID uh, focus on the things, the purposeful measures that will, the purposeful projects and initiatives that will make a difference, is um, uh, how long um, uh, can you hold people's um, patience and attention between being able to show results? Um, and uh, the our research from uh, different industries and different um, specialties is always comes down to uh, the magic number being three months, that if you can't demonstrate um, really tangible outcomes, uh, um, uh, and that, that, that means being able to understand these direct benefits and be able to make them um, real and understood by a stakeholder community, um, they need to be able to fit within those kind of planning cycles of a, of a quarter, uh, at least. Um, and this is often also part of broader um, uh, transformational change in terms of behaviours and cultures moving to, to faster, more innovative, shorter cycles of, of change. So in summary, uh, key things to um, uh, enable the uh, API strategy story um, to uh, uh, get clear and focused is about um, understanding, connecting to uh, stakeholders and their success and being able to own and get their support for the direct benefits that will enable them to do the things that uh, um, will uh, realize their transformation and ensure that the execution process is set up to show results often, to show measures that, that are meaningful and be able to learn and pivot and uh, evolve those metrics over time. So if you would like to find out um, more, I'd be um, very happy to uh, um, be connected on via LinkedIn. Um, you can contact me there. Um, and uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> Hello, Claire. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. thank you for this great presentation. So we have a comment from uh, Mariuka in the in, in the chat. Like, would you would you stand by saying like according to your presentation that sometimes EPI means all people important? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I, that's a, it's different than what active pharmaceutical ingredient or the um, <laughs> Association of Petroleum Industries. Um, I, uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's what, what is important, not who are the important people. So um, I'm a strong believer that um, uh, change generally happens um, uh, in uh, as much as anything in kind of a viral way in some ways. And... Um, that change doesn't have to come from top down. Uh, uh, certainly, some people would say that yes, having a, a Jeff Bezos style uh, mandate um, can uh, uh, you know can can get people's attention, but that's not the only thing that has made Amazon um, successful for sure. And I think um, uh, I, I think stakeholders come from uh, it's not actually their job titles. Um, necessarily and their hierarchies that that mean that they'll be able to get on board and and provide support a lot of it is about finding the places that will um, make a difference um, and that connect connect to the broader strategy and that can be articulated and resonate in that way I'm not sure if that's answered Mayuka's question quite <laughs> yeah I think uh, I think it, it talks about the uh, uh, the people aspect uh, you know some uh, it's so you have the, you have the in the three circles, you have the technologists, you have the sponsors, and you have the transformers, mm -hmm. uh, right? So uh, does that mean that before any kind of digital transformation, and especially if driven by EPIs that will make all the interaction programmable, you need to understand all these uh, interactions and links and bindings? Um, it's, it's more that um, in order to be able to show how APIs can make a difference, um, people who, uh, from an API perspective, so it's not an organizational, um, uh, it's not an operating model, it is uh, more of a, a demonstration of um, where people are um, going to, uh, where people are working with APIs and can show and need to make a difference. And depending on where the, the center of gravity can be in, in any one of those three. Um, so for example, some organizations may have a digital transformation, um, a transformation team um, or innovation center or a group that is, that is in the transformer space who might be um, doing a lot of experimentation with third parties and may off the back of that be developing some really interesting API product opportunities. Um, or they may be doing some customer journey reimagination, in which case they're using APIs as Lego blocks to help um, stitch together a faster experience. In the sponsor community, there may be people who are running businesses today or running uh, managing customer relationships who can see APIs as a, a new opportunity of um, maybe creating new um, revenue channels or maybe even to um, strengthen existing relationships through better technology enablement. The technology community may be getting APIs, um, the benefit of you know, simplifying legacy and um, reducing technology risk. Uh, any one of those three or the boundaries between them could be the place where the API, a APIs get the most attention and, and interest, and they may start and they may spread to the others. Um, it's, it, it, it's it's more about recognizing that um, APIs are not necessarily a project, <laughs> or um, that 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 they can't meet many they, they can't mean many things to many people. They do. Um, the the challenge is they often mean too many things to too many people, and uh, what you need help on is 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 focus. And that's that to me was what the McKinsey report was saying as well is expected of organizations going through change at the moment, which is. You need to be really purposeful about um, where the organization is going to invest. And so anything you can do to help be clear about that will help. 
Yeah, thank you very much for answering these questions. We are in perfect uh, timing. Uh, thank you very much, Claire. And again, you can uh, reach Claire directly on LinkedIn or on APIs First or in Women in APIs. And Claire, you are part of the API Collective, like like Alan uh, previously. Very right? proud to be a member of the, the API Collective and um, like to be uh, sandwiched between um, Alan and Mariuka. Um, yeah. With yourself, this is, right? This and myself, yeah. This is the API Collective morning at uh, at some point. Thank you very much, Claire. And uh, now on stage, we.